Welcome back for Bible Basics for New Believers. We are in our second series of videos. In this series, we are taking some of the more challenging parts of the first video series and going into a little bit more depth so that you may have better understanding of those. The area we're dealing with today and which we have dealt with in our first video in this series is the time of the divided kingdom. We are especially concentrating on that area from the death of Solomon to 200 years later when Assyria comes and conquers the northern kingdom. There is a link for a chart below which you need to download to be able to help you walk through this period. It is a very challenging period and as you look at that chart you will see the kingdoms of the north are on the left side of the chart the kingdoms of Judah or the southern kingdom are on the right hand side of the chart. Also take note that these are dates in BC so they are going to go downwards instead of upwards. As we get started here we will be just doing a general overview of this period. If you want to go into even more detail than I go into today I will provide a link for you to do that also. So in our last video, we left off at Rehoboam and Jeroboam. Those were the first two kings, the first king of the northern kingdom and the first of the southern, the first of Israel, the first of Judah. And today we will pick up from that point and move on. We note first that Rehoboam dies before Jeroboam and his son Abijam will reign for three years. Abijan brings a force of 400,000 men against Jeroboam's 800,000 men and he is outmaneuvered by Jeroboam and is about to be defeated. But he calls out to God and God gives him the victory. Jeroboam also has a son, Abijah, who he loves dearly, who gets sick and he sends his wife to the prophet to ask if he will survive. And the prophet tells her that the son will not live and that because Jeroboam has brought idolatry into the northern kingdom, his dynasty will also die. When he dies, his son Nabob succeeds him. Nadab is murdered by Basha after one year and Basha goes on to kill all the family of Jeroboam, thus fulfilling that prophecy. Then we move over to the southern kingdom and Abijam dies and his son Asa rules. Asa is given great military victories and defeats the Cushites who actually come against him. He also brings religious reform to Judah and eliminates idol worship. Basha decides to invade the southern kingdom and he sets up fortifications at Ramah, which is only two hours away from Jerusalem, the capital of the southern kingdom. Asa, instead of going to God for help this time, asks Ben-Hadad of Syria to come to his aid. Ben-Hadad breaks a treaty he has with Basha and then joins Asa in the battle. Asa does gain the victory. But because he did not rely on God, the peace that had characterized his reign to this point is removed. And he deals with a number of attacks from neighboring countries. When Asa dies, his son Jehoshaphat comes to reign. Basha dies and Elah, his son, rules. He rules for about two years. Because he follows the same policies of Jeroboam, bringing idolatry into the northern kingdom, his dynasty, or the dynasty of his father, Basha, will also be eliminated. Zimri, who is a military leader, kills Elah, and then, as prophesied, goes and kills the whole house of Basha. In the meantime, the troops of the northern kingdom are fighting against the Philistines when they get the news that Zimri has murdered Elah. They become outraged and anoint their leader, Amri, as the next king. Amri comes up against Zimri. Zimri realizes he is outmatched 
and instead of allowing defeat, goes into his palace, sets it on fire, and commits suicide. His reign in the northern kingdom was only seven days. Omri will only rule over half of Israel at this point, the first couple of years, because the people elect Tibni to rule over the other half. But Omri will eventually prevail and become the king of all of the northern kingdom, and he moves the northern capital to Samaria, where it will remain for the rest of the history of the northern kingdom. Omri, as a good military leader, conquers and subdues Moab. He also enters into agreement with Phoenicia so that they will then be allies. There is no recorded history between Omri and Jehoshaphat. When Omri dies, Ahab reigns. That's his son. This again, the northern kingdom. He marries Jezebel to cement the relationship with Phoenicia. When that happens, Baal worship enters into the northern kingdom or Israel. And Ahab himself becomes a worshiper of Baal. Because of this, Elijah the prophet prophesies a drought in Samaria. At the time that the drought is to end, Elijah challenges the prophets of Baal at Mount Carmel and defeats them. This angers Jezebel and she intends to kill Elijah and he has to flee. Meanwhile, Ben-Hadad of Syria attacks Samaria. Ahab repels him twice. Ahab then kills Naboth, an innocent owner of a vineyard, because he wants that vineyard. And this angers God so much that Elijah again comes and prophesies against Ahab, telling him that all of his progeny would die that Jezebel would be eaten by the dogs, and that Ahab himself would have his blood licked by the dogs. Assyria then, who is growing in power at this point in time, tries to invade the area. Ahab and Ben-Hadad, who had to this point been rivals, unite, and with other kings, they fight against the Assyrians and are able to repel them. Meanwhile, in the southern kingdom, Jehoshaphat is driving out all of the idols in Judah. Jehoshaphat, unlike the kings before him, wants to seek an alliance with Israel instead of being at war. His son Jehoram marries Athaliah, the daughter of Ahab and Jezebel. Shortly after being allies in repelling Assyria, Ben-Hadad then turns again against Ahab. Ahab asks for help from Jehoshaphat to join him against Ben-Hadad II of Syria. Despite a warning by the prophet, the two kings do proceed against Syria. Ahab is killed in battle, and later the dogs lick his blood out of his chariot. Jehoshaphat runs back to Jerusalem. Ahaziah succeeds Ahab. He falls from a window, and instead of seeking God to see whether he will live or not, he asks Baal, and Elijah the prophet predicts his death. When he dies, Joram, sometimes called Jehoram, becomes the next king of the north, and we will shortly have a king, Jehoram, of the south also. So keep these two straight in your mind. Jehoram of Israel gets Jehoshaphat to join him against battle with Moab. On the way to battle, they run out of water for themselves and for their horses and are about to die. Jehoshaphat wants to seek the prophet nearby, Elisha, for his help. Now this is the prophet Elisha, not Elijah. Elisha has succeeded Elijah as the prophet of God. Elisha rebukes Jehoram, but because of Jehoshaphat, he says God will give the victory. And God does. Jehoshaphat dies, and his son Jehoram 
becomes king and kills all of his brothers. Jehoram battles against the Edomites and he loses. Later, the Philistines and the Arabians join together to plunder Jerusalem. They kill Jehoram and all of his progeny except for one son, Ahaziah. Edom captures the fleeing fugitives, turns them back over to the Philistines, and as a result, God prophesies he will destroy the entire house of Esau or the Edomites. Jehoram of Judah dies of an illness after two years. Ahaziah, also called Jehoahaz, becomes king in Judah. Ahaziah joins Joram or Jehoram of Israel against Haziel of Syria. Joram is wounded, Ahaziah visits him, and at the meantime Jehu, an army commander for Israel, remains at the battle. Elisha commands one of his prophets to anoint Jehu king of Israel. Jehu is commanded to eradicate the house of Ahab because of the sins of Jezebel. Jehu takes a troop of men to Jezreel, where Joram or Jehoram is recovering and Ahaz is visiting. They come out to meet Jehu. Joram or Jehoram is killed. Ahaziah is wounded and dies later. Jehu then will continue into Jezreel. He commands that Jezebel be thrown out of the window and that's where the dogs will eat her carcass. Jehu has Ahab's 70 sons killed in Samaria. He also kills all the court in Jezreel. He makes his way to Samaria, kills 42 more relatives, and kills the court in Samaria. Baal worship is thus eradicated from Israel, but the golden calf worship still continues. Ataliah, who is the mother of Ahaziah, or the wife of Jehoram of Judah, who is also the sister of Jehoram of Israel, hears of Ahaziah's death and kills all the grandchildren who will be the heirs and places herself in the queenship. Meanwhile, Ahaziah, who has now passed away, his sister rescues Joash, who is only a baby, brings him to her husband, the high priest, Jehoiada. They hide Joash for seven years, and in that period of time, they make alliances with the royal guard of the palace. At seven years old, Jehoiada anoints Joash as the king of Judah, and Adaliah is killed. Joash, who is now a kid king, only seven years old, rules under the guidance of the high priest Jehoiada. He restores the temple and shows of his love for God. It is during this time that the prophet Joel records the locust invasion of Judah and how God will restore the people. When Jehoiada dies, the people ask Joash for the opportunity to worship other gods. Joash allows this, and when he is opposed by Zechariah, who is the son of Jehoiada the high priest, who just died, Joash kills him. Meanwhile, Haziel, king of Syria, attacks and defeats Joash, who is wounded. Servants of Zechariah finish him off and kill Joash, who is now a grown king. Joash's son Amaziah becomes king. Jehu of Israel dies. Jehoah has his son becomes king. At this point in time, God delivers Israel into hands of Syria under Ben-Hadad III. Jehoah has praise for deliverance and the Assyrians subdue Syria. Without the threat of Syria, Israel grows in strength. Jehoahaz dies, Jehoash or Joash becomes king of Israel. Jehoash the king pays respect to a dying Elisha, 
He is told to strike the ground with arrows to determine how God will treat him. He strikes the ground only three times instead of five or six. Therefore, God grants only partial victory over Syria. Three victories instead of a total defeat. Nonetheless, Israel continues to prosper under Jehoash. Amaziah, meanwhile, in the south, begins a campaign against Edom. He kills the servants who murdered his dad, Joash. Amaziah hires 100,000 men from Jehoahash, from the northern kingdom, as mercenaries to help him in battle. He sends these back after he is confronted by the prophet and is told to rely on God for the victory. Edom is routed. The dismissed mercenaries then plunder the northern Judah for the booty because they were not paid. Amaziah, king of Judah, brings gods of Edom to Jerusalem and begins to worship them. He decides to go to war against Jehoahash for the plundering of Judah. Jehoahash defeats Amaziah, breaks the walls of Jerusalem, and raids the temple. Amaziah then t is taken to Samaria where he remains alive in the northern kingdom. His son Azariah, also known as Uzziah, is placed on the throne in Judah. When Jehoahash dies and his son Jeroboam II rules, he lets Amaziah return back to Judah, where Amaziah and Uzziah will reign together for 15 years in Judah. Amaziah is killed by his people because he brought over the Edomite gods, and his son Uzziah continues to reign by himself. Jeroboam II restores the land of Israel, and Israel knows its greatest prosperity underneath his rule, despite the fact that there is great spiritual decay. The prophet Amos prophesies the end of the dynasty of Jeroboam because of the spiritual decay. Uzziah, meanwhile, in the southern kingdom, has victory over Philistines and other enemies. Overcome by pride, Uzziah makes an offering in the temple himself, though he is not a high priest. Because of this, God strikes him with leprosy. Jeroboam II dies. His son, Zechariah, rules only six months, and Shalem kills him. Shalem only rules one month and is killed by Menahem, the commander of the army. Menahem rules, but Pekah also claims leadership. Tispa, which is a city that does not recognize Menahem, has Menahem punished them by killing all of the pregnant women. At this point in time, Tilgath-Pileser III becomes king of Assyria, and he conquers Babylon fully. Assyria is now the dominant world power. He then turns his attentions towards Syria and Israel. Uzziah unites other coastal nations, and they are able to hold off Tilgath-Pileser III. Menahem, on the other hand, is forced to pay a heavy tribute. Because Uzziah is at battle, he unites his son Jotham to rule in Jerusalem. Jotham also anoints Ahaz, his son, as a co-regent. Thus, during this period from 743 to 740 BC, Uzziah, Jotham, and Ahaz rule the southern kingdom together. Menahem dies. His son Pekiah rules for two years. Pekah, the rival of Menahem, is a military leader under Pekiah. Pekah leads a revolt and kills Pekiah. In 740 BC, Jotham becomes the sole king of Judah. The Ammonites rebel against Judah, but Jotham defeats them. Tilgath-Pileser III of Assyria begins a campaign against Judah 
and the coastal allies. Ahaz, son of Jotham, leads a group of pro-Assyrians against his father in a coup and wins. Though Jotham rules a few more years, his power is essentially gone. Ahaz restores Baal worship in Judah. Ahaz becomes king. He is constantly harassed by former allies because he is unwilling to fight Assyria. Finally, Rezin of Syria and Pekah of Israel come against him. Ahaz. Ahaz prepares for war. While assessing the water supply of Jerusalem, he is confronted by Isaiah the prophet, who promises that he will have victory. Isaiah tells Ahaz to ask for a sign, but he refuses, feigning he would not test the Lord. But he is really counting on Assyria. The Lord does give a sign, and that is the virgin birth that will ultimately be fulfilled in Jesus Christ. That's in Isaiah 7, 10 through 17. But the immediate fulfillment of that prophecy was that before the promised son could make moral choices, both Syria and Israel would be conquered. And that does occur. Ahaz refuses to trust God, instead plundering his own palace and temple to give a large tribute to Tilgath Pileser III. Tilgath Pileser III begins a second assault against the area. Rezin and Pekah attacked Judah, inflicting heavy losses. Edom also attacks Judah in her weakness. Tilgath Pileser III then attacks Syria and Israel. Rezin and Pekah return home to defend themselves. Tilgath Pileser III conquers Syria. Meanwhile, in the northern kingdom, Hosea revolts and kills Pekah and becomes king of Israel. Hosea bows to Tilgath Pileser III and is left with only a small portion of his new kingdom. Meanwhile, Ahaz in the southern kingdom is left in rule of his country but must answer to Tilgath Pileser III for all of his movements. He also pays a heavy second tribute to Tilgath Pileser III. When Tilgath Pileser III dies, Shalmaneser becomes king of Assyria. Hosea of the Northern Kingdom takes the opportunity of this change of power to revolt against Assyria. Hosea allies with Egypt, but Egypt does not show up to protect him. Shalomazer begins campaign against Hosea and finally conquers him after three years. Shalomazer deports and imports people, and an Assyrian governor is placed in charge of Samaria or the northern kingdom. At this point in time, the end of the northern kingdom occurs. I know this has been a little complicated, but hopefully through the chart and the reading of the notes, you can kind of follow what has happened during this period. That will conclude our look at this 200th period of the divided kingdom. As you note on your chart, there are further kings of Judah, starting with Hezekiah all the way down to Zedekiah. Because there's only one kingdom to deal with, the Bible narrative is pretty clear to follow at this point, so we will not go into detail about that. In our next videos, we will be looking at the prophets, the written prophets, and go into a little bit more detail about them. If you are enjoying these videos, please feel free to subscribe. And until then, God bless.